In this video, we'll talk about cyclic AMP as a second messenger. So second messenger are the middleman in different signaling pathway. One of the most important second messenger is cyclic AMP. Cyclic AMP is literally involved in many pathways. For example, it is underneath or it is downstream to the beta adrenergic receptor, glucagon receptor, vasopressin receptor, LH, FSH, T, TSH receptor, parathyroid hormone receptor and many more. So cyclic AMP is literally part of different signaling cascade and that is why it's important to understand how cyclic AMP is generated, what it is capable of doing and why it is important from a physiological context. So cyclic AMP is generated by an enzyme known as adenylate cyclase. So adenylate cyclase converts ATP into the cyclic AMP. Notice this, the phosphate group is now in a cyclic format right now. So cyclic AMP is the second messenger or the middleman which convey the message from the receptor level to the downstream level. Let us understand how. So we are going to look at a classical GS signaling scheme. In this case, there are G protein coupled receptor which are present in the cell surface. Many of the hormone receptors are actually G protein coupled receptors. For example, FSH or LH receptors are like that. So basically, when the ligand is bound then what happens is the trimeric G protein which is associated with the receptor gets activated. It replaces GDP with active form GTP. Now the alpha subunit dissociate and dislodge to activate the enzyme adenylate cyclase. So moral of the story, ligand binding triggers some downstream processes which act actually activates adenylate cyclase. Once adenylate cyclase is activated, adenylate cyclase converts ATP into cyclic AMP. Here the triangle is basically a symbol for cyclic AMP. Cyclic AMP binds to catalytic subunit of protein kinase A and protein kinase A's catalytic unit can ultimately go to the nucleus and it can basically uh, lead to specific gene uh, transcription. So protein kinase A has two subunits, regulatory subunit where the cyclic AMP binds and the catalytic subunit which dislodges and go into the nucleus interact with other factors like CREB and give rise to transcription of many genes. So now we understand why cyclic AMP is important and sometimes cyclic AMP is really important from a pathological context. So basically in cholera toxin what happens is there are toxins which get released into the cell and that modify the G proteins. So basically the cholera toxin is a AB toxin. This is the normal scheme of uh, the G protein coupled receptor signaling where ATP gets converted into cyclic AMP. But what happens is cholera toxin, toxin modifies the G protein. It ADP ribosylates the G protein. This locks the G protein into an active configuration which activates the adenylate cyclase for longer. So lots and lots of cyclic AMP is generated. Cyclic AMP can activate the opening of a channel known as CFTR which lead to a huge loss of chloride and alongside chloride water is also lost resulting in uh, diarrhea or rice water stool. So now we can understand cyclic AMP level alteration in the cell can underlie a pathology of a disease. Okay. Question is, how did scientists figure out cyclic AMP could work like a second messenger? Isn't it pretty surprising that how a atypical molecule can work like a signaling uh, or second messenger? It always bothered the scientist and all this thing actually came into limelight from the work of uh, Sutherland. Earl Sutherland won the 1971 Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine for his discoveries uh, showing the how hormones actually work. He is also the father of endocrinology. Now Sutherland actually shows that cyclic AMP can act like a second messenger. And he was working on the lab of uh, Carl and Gertie Cori, the couple who discovered the Cori cycle in, and that, that's famous in biochemistry. Anyway, in, in their lab, Sutherland showed that epinephrine has a activity of breaking down, down glycogen into glucose. So it basically triggers the glycogenolysis pathway. So what he did, he took a mouse, extracted the liver, grinded the liver and created two fractions out of it. One is basically the cytoplasmic fraction 
which should has the enzyme glycogen phosphorylase that can break down the glucose and uh, uh, glycogen and basically uh, the membrane fraction should have the receptor for epinephrine now in the membrane factor a uh, membrane uh, fraction he provided epinephrine now epinephrine should is expected to be present on the membrane which is present in this membrane fraction now his idea was there could be some molecule which might be produced by this epinephrine binding to the receptor and that might lead to the response so what he did his hypothesis was okay some middleman would be generated and now if i take that solution which contains this unknown middleman then a response would be expected so what he took is basically the filtrate of this solution and added to the cytoplasmic fraction which has the enzyme and what he saw that the enzyme activity or the phosphorylase enzyme activity was augmented several times after epinephrine was added that simply says that the receptor and the ligand directly didn't do anything there was a middleman which led to this augmentation of enzyme activity later on several decades of research found out this middleman to be actually cyclic amp and this is how first time it was found that cyclic amp was an important second messenger now how to check the level of cyclic amp in a cell in real time one can use the technique fret there are specific fret sensors for cyclic amp and these fret sensors actually mimic the uh, protein kinase a which actually binds to the cyclic amp in normal case fret happens excitation in 4 nanometer gives to a emission in 530 nanometer because of fret but when cyclic amp binds there is a loss of fret due to a conformational change so any loss of fret would lead to excitation in 440 nanometer but emission in 475 instead of 530 nanometer so this kind of alteration in fluorescence and alteration in fret would report the presence of cyclic amp so simply to put basically normally what happens that when ligand binds adenylate cyclates get activated cyclic amp is generated and it binds to the um, regulatory subunit of protein kinase a now instead of regulatory subunit of protein kinase a here is our reporter fret reporter which can bind to cyclic amp and can give us an idea about how much cyclic amp is generated so basically when there is no cyclic amp there was fret when there was cyclic amp in the system due to a signaling cascade the fret would be reduced so decline in fret in this particular scenario would report us about the cyclic amp's presence or generation of cyclic amp this is a modern technique by which one can literally uh, look at the production of cyclic amp in real time in a cell now cyclic amp system is really important for many many physiological aspect one such physiological aspect that is uh, important to understand is the olfactory learning of drosophila it turns out the mutants which failed to generate cyclic amp was shown to have compromised learning index so they have a very simple olfactory learning let me tell you why basically there are there is a odor which is paired with a shock so fly remembers this kind of aversive cue and try to avoid this kind of odor later on our odor second is given and this second odor doesn't provide come with a shock so flies are happy with this odor next time they are given a choice between these two arms this time there is no shock but they would remember the odor which came with the shock and they would avoid that arm and in that case learning index is kind of calculated so this is how the learning index of control and mutant looks like so you can clearly see the mutant has lot so lower learning curve right this tells us cyclic amp is really important for olfactory learning in the flies so it gives you the physiological context of cyclic amp signaling and how cyclic amp is important as a second messenger so i hope this video was useful if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up don't forget to like share and subscribe get notes and flashcards in our facebook and instagram page links are provided in the description you can also practice questions all the links are also provided in the description please support our channel using super thanks you can find this option down uh, i mean bottom side of every video it's a heart shape icon uh, with dollar in it press that icon and Pay a small amount. Your small uh, contribution is our motivation. See you in the next video.